Hi, I'm Noreen and I'm an undergraduate researcher at JBay, which stands for Joint Bioenergy Institute. JBay is part of Lawrence Berkeley National Labs and part of the U.S. Department of Energy and it's actually run by a Berkeley professor, Jay Kiesling. Its goal is to make biofuels cheap and efficient, so that means we get to engineer plants, bacteria, and yeast to produce biofuels out of renewable resources like table sugar. Hi, my name is Victor and I work with Maureen as an undergraduate researcher at JBay. We work in the fuel synthesis division where we mainly focus on synthetic biology. Synthetic biology is the use of genetic engineering techniques to swap genes between two different species in order to create a new organism. A lot of researchers at JBay are focusing on producing isoprenoids, which is a specific type of a carbon-based molecule useful in many industries. So it's present in everything from lipstick to anti-malarial drugs. Here we're focusing on it for biofuels. One of the biggest questions in synthetic biology today is how do you reprogram a cell's behavior from everyday survival to producing the things you want it to produce? Our research team has been successful in implementing bisabolene synthase, a protein normally found in evergreens that produce bisabolene, into the genetic code or genome of E. coli. After bisabolene is produced, we tweak it chemically to a very similar molecule called bisabolene. Based on its structure, bisabolene has really similar properties to uh, the diesel fuel that's already on the market, meaning that you wouldn't have to change the car's engine or how the fuel is distributed. Our goal is to produce uh, enough bisabolene that it's cheaper and more sustainable than existing diesel fuel. In order to produce bisabolene in E. coli, the first thing we had to do was map out the metabolic pathway. This means that we had to figure out every intermediate to go through, from table sugar to a biofuel in the cell. Since bisabolene is an isoprenoid, we decided to split up the pathway into two halves. The first would go from table sugar to a molecule called mevalinate, and the second would go from mevalinate to bisabolene. We can recombine bisabolene synthase from trees with different parts, such as promoters, which are sequences of DNA that change the level of protein expression in the cell. Promoters control the concentration of each compound along the metabolic pathway, which we can then transform into the bacteria that have been modified to readily accept new DNA. Then we can test production of each combination of promoters and genes. A main challenge in biofuels production is that over time the host organism evolves to produce less isoprenoid. The solution we're working with is to integrate the pathway into the bacteria's own genome instead of using plasmids, which are circular pieces of DNA that float around in the cell and can easily mutate. This is called chromosomal integration, and with fewer mutations in the pathway, we should see an increased yield in bisabolin. The cool thing about synthetic biology is that just by changing out a part, you can produce an entirely different product. That means that the backbone of our research can be used to make all kinds of isoprenoids, from biofuels to pharmaceutical products. Our project to produce bisabolene more sustainably and efficiently should make biofuels more accessible for the average consumer.